Crocheters everywhere are up in arms about the way that this Stardew Valley inspired crochet pillow was marketed. Some complaining about false advertising and gatekeeping, and others accusing this creator of intentionally scamming people by hiding information just to make a quick buck. This story is really interesting to me, and I think it brings up a lot of discussions that need to be had about the crochet community online. More specifically, how hostile the community can be to people that try to interact with it without first knowing all of the rules that they're supposed to. Okay, sorry, the sun is like coming in weird on me right now. Ezle, I think is how you say it. I'm just gonna refer to them as Ez is a Mexican-American gaming creator based in Texas who has 136,000 followers on Instagram and 151,000 followers on TikTok. She plays games like Stardew Valley, Animal Crossing, Fallout, and I'm sure some other games that I didn't just immediately recognize from scrolling through her page. I'm not a gamer, okay? Don't sue me. She also recently started sharing her crochet projects and punch needle projects that are mostly inspired by characters or designs from the games that she plays. Here are some of the projects that they've made. The Clee Fairy shoulder bag, I don't know if that's how you say it, a Legend of Zelda pillow, a little Link accessory bag, a Totoro tablet sleeve, Wizard Kirby wall rug, Ness wallet, Stardew Valley chicken wrist rest, and then the design that caused all of the fuss that we have to talk about today, this Stardew Valley chicken and egg pillow. So as started posting videos of this design, one of these videos got 3.4 million views on Instagram. While they only originally sold these as made to order designs where you just like go on the website, purchase it, and then she makes it for you. She decided to release a pattern for this particular design because of how much interest there was in the pattern. Her deciding to write a pattern was also in part because of how many comments there were on the reel asking how she did the color changes. For a little context, since I know not all of you are crocheters, this is what crochet color changes usually look like. Here's a little Astro Cat made by Aiden Wells Crochet. Here's a tapestry called Heat Seeker by Ty Bailey. And here is a Tiger Tapestry by Destiny Makes. The main difference between these, besides like the style obviously not being like 8-bit pixel work, is that the colors kind of lie flat on the surface of the tapestry. And each little pixel in the color work chart isn't completely square. It's the shape of a crochet stitch, which is like mostly square, but it has some sort of like rounded edges as well. And then that's in contrast with Ez's pillow, where all of the colors are just like completely square little blocks. So people are wondering how this is done. So Ez first posted a reel of this design all the way back in July, 2023. And like I said, there were a bunch of comments of people asking what was going on. So one thing they did mention in response to these comments was that they used the yarn under single crochet, like amigurumi stitch, to create more square stitches. But the thing that she didn't say in the comments is that the actual color changes were made by cross stitching on top of the fabric of the pillow. So the big crochet color change secret that people were waiting to hear about was just to crochet a plain pillow and then cross stitch a design onto it. Ez responded to some questions that I sent over via DM. And one thing I asked was if this withholding of information at the beginning was something that was on purpose or was just a miscommunication. And here's what they said. Actually, in the beginning, I did gatekeep. I didn't want people to know how I created my products because I thought I was the only one doing it this way. I felt like it was a trade secret, if that makes sense. I felt like I had the right to keep it since I only sold physical products. I've seen other creators avoid answering questions like this to gatekeep their techniques, so I thought that was normal, frankly. I let people know how I did my square grid, which is the yarn under, yarn over method and working in a circle, but that was about it. Not my color changing, I avoided answering those questions. We'll talk a little bit more as the video goes on about the quote unquote gatekeeping aspect of things, but for now, if you are interested in learning new techniques, then you should check out the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes led by industry professionals on topics ranging from organization to woodworking. If you don't know where to start, you can check out the learning paths. These can help you find a good starting place for projects with curated high quality classes. Each learning path combines multiple classes taught by different teachers so you can easily focus on a specific skill set. I'm still working on the organization and planning for creative freelancers path. I finished watching the bullet journaling class by Dylan Merzwinski in January and it's completely changed how I use my planner for work and for personal things. Like, look at this. I love having all my little spreads. The class was really well structured, fast paced, and the information was super immediately applicable. In the same learning path, I also watched a class on creative space, a guide on organizing your workspace to best fit your creative needs. It's always nice to have a little check-in about my space and see if the way I have things set up right now is actually serving me or if it's just the way I've been doing things. Skillshare also has knitting and crochet learning paths. I'm particularly impressed by the Perfect Fit Knits class. I really like the way that they explain the normally like pretty boring math stuff for helping you learn how to modify patterns. I like 
like watching stuff. I like learning. I really like using Skillshare. I even got one of my best friends into watching Skillshare and updating me on their newfound desire to start a woodworking side hustle. If you're interested in starting your learning journey today, the first 500 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. Okay, so as put out a tester call for the design on December 4th, for the uninitiated, a pattern tester is someone who is chosen to test a pattern. Usually this involves sending in an application to be chosen, receiving the pattern, crocheting and or knitting the project, and then sending feedback to the designer. In many cases, being chosen to test also has some social media posting requirements like certain photos that the designer wants you to take or certain times that they want you to post like on the release day. Essentially a pattern test just ensures that the pattern is clear and the people who purchase the pattern will be able to make it. Many pattern tests also serve as a kind of like guerrilla marketing where photos of the pattern are cross posted to all of these different accounts in the community, which then increases the reach and visibility of the pattern on its release day. Okay, so where this all really starts is on March 2nd, a user posted on the r slash crochet Reddit page, this post titled feeling irked slash want to vent slash have I been unreasonable. In the post, they say, I have been following a designer on Instagram who has been promoting a Stardew Valley crochet pillow for months. The pattern finally dropped last night and it was the quickest purchase I've made in ages. I open the PDF and see it's a plain crochet pillow with all the design work in cross stitch. I started questioning myself because I rushed to buy the pattern so quickly, so I went over the pattern listing, and I just really don't think it's clear about what to expect. Screenshots provided. I'll show you in a second. The designer did post that they wanted everyone to be happy, so if there was any feedback to reach out, which I did, hopefully diplomatically, and she was great about giving me a refund, but I can't help wondering if I am being unreasonable now. I don't know, maybe this post will stop someone else from jumping in with excitement like I did to essentially buy a cross-stitch chart. And here's what the description said. Introducing the Crochet Stardew Valley Chicken and Egg Pillow Pattern, your passport to crafting enchanting Stardew Valley magic. Whether you're an experienced crochet artist or a newbie eager to dive into the world of yarn and hooks, this pattern is your gateway to creating a cozy, two-sided pillow inspired by the beloved game. What awaits you? Gaming-inspired adventure. Embark on a delightful journey into the world of Stardew Valley as you crochet a charming pillow featuring the iconic chicken and egg motif. Beginner's best friend. Worried about tackling a complex crochet project? Fret not. We've sprinkled video demonstrations throughout, revealing the secrets of working with velvet yarn, making the learning process fun and accessible for all skill levels. Double-sided delight. Just like the original design, this pattern includes instructions for both sides of the pillow. To add even more charm and detail to this enchanting project, the pattern incorporates techniques that includes cross-stitch color changes. These methods allow for intricate detailing and vibrant dynamic visuals, perfectly capturing the essence of Stardew Valley's beloved characters and scenes. Whether you're adept at these techniques or just learning, the pattern provides guidance and tips to help you master each step, ensuring your creation is as charming and whimsical as the game that inspired it. So the main complaints that this person raised and that I saw in the comments mostly boiled down to three different categories. The first one is misleading advertising and gatekeeping the color change method. The next concerns about the pattern being written by AI. And then third, the trademark issues with using Stardew Valley's IP to monetize your crochet work. We sort of talked about this already with the misleading advertising of people being upset that in the comments, as was being unclear about what techniques she was using for the color changes and really made it seem like the only way that you could really learn how to make the pillow the way that they did was to purchase the pattern. And very quickly, this led to people jumping to conclusions as people love to do on the internet, that as was trying to scam people because this pattern just like wasn't what they expected and it wasn't as advertised and how they thought it should be advertised. In terms of gatekeeping the color changes, I do think there was some pretty intentional misdirection here. Ez posted a video making a Ness little accessory pouch and in the video she shows herself crocheting some color changes where, you know, she has one color on her hook and then in the next clip there's a different color on the hook and that's how traditionally crochet color changes are made and then it just cuts to the end where the accessory pouch is completed. But in the case of most of her other color work projects, if not all, the background is just completely plain and then the colors are added later on. So people went back and found this and were saying, she's intentionally trying to hide the fact that she is using cross stitch instead of crochet. Another thing that Ez mentioned when talking to me about the whole gatekeeping thing was that she was really inspired by an episode of Chef's Table. One of the chefs, he had a great dish. Then his boss told him, you know, once this dish is on the menu, it belongs to the restaurant. It doesn't belong to you anymore. And he said, go for it. There's plenty more where that came from. And that hit me so hard. 
I realized I was being insecure creatively. If someone is holding on to an idea that strongly, they must not be confident in being able to create anything else. And that wasn't the case for me. I had plenty more where that came from. So that's when I decided to do the highly requested pattern and let the secret out so it can belong to the world and I can create other things. In another vein, some of the comments were complaining that the pattern description was written by AI. When asked if they used any AI to write the pattern or the pattern listing description, Ez said that they do use AI to write the descriptions, but for the pattern itself that they did that all themselves. They said they stayed up long nights trying to make sure they could release by the deadline and making sure it was a quality piece. If anyone believes the pattern was written by AI, thank you, I tried my best. She does say also that she did use AI to write the pattern description. You can tell the difference because ChatG BT likes to use super fluffy words like whimsical and enchanting. She then cites the fact that she's just one person running a business and wouldn't have time to write everything herself. I don't think there's anything wrong with letting ChatGBT write out emails or product descriptions if it will allow me to have more time creating. Frankly, if I wrote my product descriptions, they'd be like, pillow good, I hope, you like? And here's the thing, a lot of people use AI for writing these days. I think there really can be merits to using it as a tool, but when you're using it to create a listing description that is not really relevant and or contains all of the information that you need for a product description, then that's when it falls short in my opinion. Her listing either intentionally or accidentally because of, you know, AI oversight doesn't include any actual materials lists. Yarn and tools galore isn't a materials list. And this is where we start to see the downsides of relying on a program like ChatGBT to fully automate writing for us. It can be a great tool, but when it remains in its unedited AI mumbo jumbo state and obfuscates imperative information, it can quickly become detrimental. Other complaints of the pattern extend to usage rights. While it's not super clear in the pattern description, uh, once you purchase the pattern, the first page says, it's important to understand that the item created from this pattern is not to be sold as your own, including at markets or similar venues. So essentially, if you buy my pattern, you can make it for yourself, but you can't sell it. And there's a lot of discourse in the community about whether you should or shouldn't be allowed to tell people if they can sell items made with your pattern. But the issue here is that since Stardew Valley is a trademarked IP, there's been some criticism of using a statement like this in this pattern. Stardew Valley is a popular farming video game that actually just recently passed the threshold for 30 million copies sold. And Concerned Ape, the creator of the game, holds the trademark for the Stardew Valley logo, name, designs, and slogans. According to their trademark, you must not use such marks without prior written permission of the company. Also kind of random, but the game is coming out with a new patch today. I'm filming on the 19th. It's coming out today. One of the updates is that you can finally drink mayonnaise in the game. Thank God, we've all been waiting for that, right? I thought this would be a fun second to take a quick break and hear a word from our Stardew Valley correspondent. Jada, you there? Hello, it is me, your local resident Stardew Valley expert. And by expert, I mean, I went on a few benders playing it a few times and I'm not really an expert, but I really do enjoy the game. I think it's the best farming simulator. I, I wanna show you what, what the first farm I made looks like. Yeah, that's right. Those of you who are longtime viewers of the channel, I look different now. No longer the Oompa Loompa in the back. I'm purple. Guess what? Heavily inspired by Abigail, Stardew Valley. That's a lie, but I'm saying it because she has purple hair love to give her amethyst all the time she also loves pumpkins that's something you need to know about stardew valley is everybody has favorites likes neutral dislikes and hates and if you want to be friends with them you got to memorize it i only have one bookmark on my google chrome web browser and it's list of all favorites stardew valley why because i'm serious about this game i share a farm with my partner but we are not partners in the game do not get it twisted we both have our wives that we fought over unfortunately i lost the fight with the wives i did not get the wife i wanted i got the other redhead did not want this redhead and i wanted the other redhead Unfortunately, that's the way it goes. I am pretty sure my partner didn't even want that redhead. He just took her from me because I wanted her. Here's our house. Here's our babies. The babies are scary. They crawl around. There's no supervision. Who is watching this baby? What are our wives doing at home? They are stay-at-home moms. I am the farmer. I am the breadwinner of the farm. Why isn't she taking care of the baby? Wanna know how I play? I like to make friends with everybody. Yeah, that's right. I'm a Gemini, it makes sense. We have another farm, me, my partner, and my other friend, Aiden. She says the way that we play is not relaxing. It's supposed to be a relaxing game. I need to go to the mines. Who the hell am I gonna give this golden pumpkin to? If you don't know, there are universal favorites. The golden pumpkin is one. I would love a golden pumpkin, but I only have one. Who am I going to give it to? 
Oh God, I'm getting right. fucked. A lot of this backlash was contained to this Reddit thread on r slash crochet with a lot of people saying that they had tried to comment on her public posts and their comments were being deleted and restricted. As a result of the backlash that the pattern received, they eventually took down the pattern listing and posted this message in her broadcast channel on Instagram. Update. I want to be able to give the people who have bought my pattern my undivided attention with any questions or concerns they may have. I'm currently taking some time to consider valuable feedback I received with the aim of making the pattern better. It's incredibly important to me that I provide you with the best possible product, so I've decided to archive the pattern for the time being so I can give my customers my undivided attention and incorporate these improvements. I truly appreciate your patience and understanding on this. It's my first pattern and it's heartwarming to know you guys were looking forward to it. Thank you once again for your support. It means more than I can express. So while the pattern was live, I had considered doing this like in-depth pattern review to let you all know what was in it if you wanted to purchase it and all of that. But since it's no longer available, I'm not gonna be doing that, but I would like to outline a few things that I thought from looking at the pattern, which I did purchase it by the way. And I wanna give you a review with the context that this is this person's first pattern. Some important things I noticed right off the bat that were missing from the pattern were gauge information. The actual pillow pattern is pretty bare bones as well. It's missing some information of like how to join in the round. There's no step that says like slip stitch and chain or just like keep going and do like a continuous join. The pattern isn't quite step one, make a pillow, but for something that is marketed as beginner friendly, it's missing some steps that I think would be crucial for a beginner to have in a pattern. And then the last thing is there's no clear instructions on how to do the cross stitch exactly. And the importance of like the direction of the the X, the way you cross over for the stitch. In one part of the pattern, they talk about how it doesn't matter which direction you cross the yarn over in the X. And it's kind of true. You, it doesn't matter which direction you do, but you should have the X's all be in the same direction for the whole project. So like for one project, your X's should be like this or like this but you shouldn't combine them. You're supposed to stick to one for the whole project. I guess it's something people pointed out and complained about that the stitches were a little messy. It's not a sin or a crime or anything. It's just cross stitchers are gonna be nitpicky about it. Some of the things that I liked about the pattern, the cross stitch charts were broken down in order of like how you should add the colors in, which I think is really helpful for a beginner. So it's like, First you add the whole like border region and then you add the, the contrasting color of the border region and then you fill in and go in as it goes. I, I don't really know how to explain it, but if you know how to cross stitch, you know what I'm talking about. I think this is really helpful for beginners. The pattern also includes two short videos. They were really cute and I thought they were a nice addition and it really helped like visualize some aspects, especially if you are a beginner. And the pattern was like pretty concise and fairly visually pleasing. My final review of the pattern is that like, it's really not that bad. It's not super beginner friendly in my opinion. There's a couple tweaks that could have made it easier. If I had opened this up as a complete beginner crocheter, I would wouldn't have ended up with a square pillow in the end and stuff would have been a little wonky. The price point at $15 is a little bit higher than the market rate as well. And that seems to be another sticking point for some of the people who purchased it. Pattern prices range from free to, I've seen things up to like $25. And generally the patterns on that like higher end of the scale are garment patterns that are graded with a bunch of sizes. So like if you have a sweater with nine sizes, it takes a lot longer to write the pattern and figure out the grading for all of the sizes than it would to write down a pattern for a pillow that's one size. Maybe if the pattern had been listed at a lower price point, people wouldn't have been so upset about it. Like if they had just paid $3 for some cross stitch charts, then they would have been like, this isn't what I expected, but like, all right. But at this higher price point of $15, it does feel a little bit more risky, I guess. Something else that people pointed out after looking at the pattern was that they thought that it hadn't been tested. And part of the reason that people thought that is because of some of the clarity issues in the pattern writing. But then also there weren't any pictures of pattern testers who had completed their projects on social media or in the pattern or anywhere. When talking to them, as mentioned that they did actually choose testers for the project. She says that she started out by choosing five testers and ended up with four in the end. They say that the testers were super nice and helpful. Something I kind of forgot to mention while I was filming before, but I thought I should add, is that a few people were also accusing as of having stolen this pattern from this website called Bracelet Book, where people post alpha patterns and like charts for different color work things. It's primarily used for bracelets, hence the name, but people also use it for like crochet and knit color work. I couldn't figure out the date that this was actually posted on Bracelet Book, but according to Ez, she made the pattern herself and did not steal it from Bracelet Book. She actually messaged the person to take it down because 
as said that she had made it first and this person was stealing her design. And we can get into the ethics of like it's existing IP who stole what, I don't know, but just thought I should mention that that's out there so that you can draw your own conclusions on that. Also, you may have noticed that I don't have any hair anymore, and that's because when I hit 100,000 subscribers, I shaved my head. Here's a quick little video of Jada, Grace, and Kara shaving my head. If you want to watch the rest of it, then uh, you can subscribe to my Patreon. I'll be posting a little video on there. Welcome. Welcome. To... <laughs> you look like scary <laughs> Welcome to Jada, Jada shaves my, my head. I like a <laughs> <laughs> I become a barber. <laughs> I quit and become a barber. Jada Barber era. Start with a mullet if anybody cares. It kind of looks like they're just getting a normal haircut. Alright, see ya! Bye! Bye. <laughs> it's fun Do you know what the shape of your skull is? No. I'm about to find out. I think what I'm gonna realize is that my head is a lot smaller your head than is I really thought. Small, it actually. is really small, right? Like I think Crawford needs crochet help. Okay. I have a question for you. <laughs> okay. So at the end, I have this like little tail. Should I make another one and tie it into the tail or just leave the tail to die? Okay. If you were in, an if you were in Animal Crossing IRL, would you want to be Tom Nook, a villager, or the character that you play as? Probably the character the I play character as. Yeah. Too. I like the tasks. Yeah. Me too. Like, I like the yeah, outfits. I like the purpose. I like the house. <laughs> like, what else? What would I do if I was I know. Work? What am I going to do but monetize my hobbies? Yeah. Grapes. This is gonna. This is gonna go in the trash anyway. So if anybody wants them, let me know. Speak we'll now. Yeah. If you wanna, hold your piece. you want us to hold some for you. Oh, this is my favorite question. You are a super villain in a cartoon world. Describe me to me your ideal <laughs> everyday main villain outfit. Oh, oh mine is oh. so easy. Okay, you go first. Mine is literally first. just my normal OTD. Like, I was gonna yeah. say the outfit you're wearing. No, not today. Like, it, it, no, but it needs to be more like a okay. uniform. I will have like. Super long straight hair, like to my knees. Ooh. Okay, updates. While some people complained that Ez had blocked them after they commented on her posts, others said that she was very responsive in the DMs and offered refunds like immediately. Before she took the pattern down to in response to the Reddit criticism, she did go back in and change the descriptions saying that the pattern required knowledge of cross stitch, but the information was still pretty buried within all of the AI stuff. I asked her if there was anything she wanted us to know about her business or what she does. And here's some things that she said. I really want people to be happy with what I create for them. When I created this pattern, I wanted to bring joy. I say that all the time. People say nice things about the items and I wanted to give them a chance to make it themselves. I truly did not think people would be so upset about the colors being cross stitch. Heck, I don't even know cross stitch terminology. I'm just sewing the design as perfectly as I can. So I also feel like it's misleading to tell people it's half cross stitch if that makes sense. It would be a terrible cross stitch pattern because I'm not a cross stitcher. Well, I guess I am now. I've had to put it in my bio website and product descriptions because I don't want people to feel misled but I also just don't feel like a cross stitcher. It takes me a long time to crochet the project and only four days to sew in the design. So to me, it always felt like a crochet project. I always felt like a crocheter, but now I feel like I'm kind of forced to identity with cross stitching. I don't even own a hoop. I didn't think I was being deceptive, but if others felt deceived and that's not okay, I'm not going to devalue their feelings. So if I got to identify as a cross stitcher because it will give people a better idea of what to expect, then cross stitcher I am. I'm so sorry to anyone who felt deceived. That wasn't my intention, but your feelings are valid. I'm learning and I'll do better. In the past, the crochet and knitting communities have been full of scams and intentionally shady behavior. See my mystical creations yarn video if you need an example of that. It makes sense that the community is wary of things that seem like they're not being done correctly. A lot of people just seem quick to jump to conclusions about newer or less experienced crocheters and knitters, often accusing people of just being in it for the money which is interesting because a lot of aspects of crocheting online are just all monetized now. And honestly, I don't think it's a crime to just be in something for the money. You're gonna burn out really fast if your only motivating factor for crocheting or knitting is to sell things and make money, but it's allowed if you want to. I also see some parallels with this and like the coding community. Very simplistically in coding, there are sort of these two branches of information where some things are more open source and other things are more monetized. Like Apple and Windows is more monetized, but something like Linux provides access to more open source foundational code. On Linux, anyone can run, study, modify, and redistribute the source code. And
and even sell copies of their modified code under the open source license. Some companies have more incentive to share their code more open source, and others want to keep their OS under wraps because that's just the way they make money. And isn't that just like the crochet community? And just like a lot of things. And it is really interesting to see this tension within the crochet and knitting communities, wanting more information to be open source, but also at the same time needing to monetize things because like we live in a society and whatnot. So here's what I'll say. The vigilantism in the crochet community often goes to extremes to prevent bad actors from coming in and financially taking advantage of people. But this happens at the expense of new designers and creators who just aren't well versed in community traditions and standards. And another thing, virality and a platform do not an expert make. We are almost all just people trying our best, trying to figure things out. And a video going viral doesn't mean that someone automatically knows all of these rules of how they're supposed to do things. I think we can all remember a little bit more to look at the context when we're witch hunting. A lot of people are out to get you, but it's mostly corporations or people with a lot of capital like Dave and Mike from knitting.com. Not the content creator who made a video, had it go viral, and now has hundreds of people asking them to write a pattern. Not the indie dyer who didn't email you back in two days or missed your email entirely. And not the local yarn store that closed on Tuesdays because their daughter has soccer practice. Let's hold people to high standards, sure, but at the end of the day, everyone's a person and everyone's trying their best. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this one. Quick little announcement to end out the video. I am lowering my pattern prices. Everything's really expensive and I don't like it. I wanna do a little bit of something to kind of give back and make my patterns more accessible to people, but I reworked the pricing so everything is about 50% less than it was before. So if you want to find some nice garment patterns for $5, they are made to measure, size inclusive, gender neutral. If you're interested, then go ahead and check out my website. And yeah, tell me you like my hair. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, make sure you like it. If this video gets 1 million likes, then I'll come to all of your houses so you can touch my hair and feel how nice it feels. So let's get this video to 1 million likes. And also thank you for 100,000 subscribers. I'm so grateful to all of you for watching all of these. It's so fun for me to get to put together stories like this. So thank you for your support and I'll see you next time. Are they done? Okay, thank God. Anyway, so I got the new update. If you don't want to hear about the update, I guess you can stop the video now, but you need to hear about the update. Minus spoilers ahead. I saw a possum. Saw a possum run through the other day. You know what else? You can get more pets. You don't have to have just one pet. You can unlock more pets, but guess what? They sell for $40,000 minimum. Marnie comes to the house and she's all like, oh, you're doing such a good job with your pet. Okay, you can adopt more pets. Adopt more pets. Give me $40,000, you freak. Do you want me to adopt or shop? Because you want me to shop. There's a purple turtle that costs $400,000, I'm pretty sure. And on top of that, I also have to build them a new watering, a new watering spot with, 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 with their bowl and everything. Why can't I just adopt a pet? You want me to adopt these animals so bad? Where are you keeping them? Can you stop rolling these credits? I have a lot to talk about. If you if you have to, that's fine, but you're gonna listen to me while these credits roll. Stardew Valley update. You need to update, update 1.6. It's like the first update in a